Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack making backflip. Telly hanged it with the action. With the Bible speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the profit, not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby man. Just caught a touchdown. D and Kevin, according to the most recent FBI crime data figures, Kansas City is one of the most violent cities in America. That fact has not changed in the last few years. And now on this King holiday, celebrating a man who championed nonviolent protest, city leaders are dealing with yet another horrible violent act. A massive shooting, multiple victims. Emergency dispatchers give word about suspect Jerron Swift, who police say opened fire on a line of people waiting to get inside the Nine Ultra Lounge. It came on a night of community celebration after the Chiefs won the AFC title game to secure their spot in the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years. Anybody who's got tourniquets, bring them to the front of the building. Instead of celebrating, some area families are now grieving after multiple deaths and injuries following more gun violence. It's an epidemic in, in um, this great city. This is an epidemic. As 41 Action News previously reported, Kansas City ranked as the fifth most deadly big city in America in 2017, with nearly 31 homicides per 100,000 residents. That number dropped in 2018 to 27.8 homicides per 100,000 residents. But in 2019, that number went up again to 30.1. Mayor Quinton Lucas has been meeting with other big city Missouri mayors and Governor Mike Parson to address the violence issue with new efforts. Those have not been fully rolled out, but we will continue to make sure we're addressing them until we get beyond this problem. The rise in homicides has coincided with a steady drop in the number of Kansas City police officers. But the number of officers is growing again after 29 new officers were recently added to the KCPD force. And again, the two people who died in this shooting were the suspect, 29-year-old Jerron Swift and a young woman, 25-year-old Raven Parks. Fifteen other people were injured in this shooting. Now, according to Chief Smith, if it wasn't for the very quick action of the armed security guard, who he said shot and killed Swift, many, many more people could have been killed or injured. Reporting live at KCPD headquarters downtown, I'm investigator Andy Alcock, 41 Action News. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob, mob, mob. We on our way to Missouri with it. Kill a city to be exact. Hope y'all got y'all bulletproof ass shit stupid around here. Now, the guy that we are going to be covering today is going to be somewhat of a Kansas City legend. Though only 26, I'm going to say he was one of the most dangerous, one of the most feared, and definitely one of the most wanted people in Kansas City history. And that's saying a lot when we're talking about a city that is always, and when I say always, ranked, I want to say no lower than top 20 as far as violent crimes and a lot of years they they end up in the top 10 kind of like in 2020 when they sat eighth where they had 7919 violent crimes and to kind of put that in perspective for you guys so for every 100,000 people in the city at least 1558 came across or was a victim of a violent crime so is definitely going to be one of the most dangerous cities right up there with cities like memphis detroit st louis little rock cleveland petersburg virginia milwaukee and that's just to name a few of them so when it comes to kill a city you got to be a real stepper to be somebody in the city and marcus nephew lee was just that now according to reports he was from the 21st Street and Norton area, and that's described as a nexus for several gangs, predominantly gangs on the east side. 
Now, 24th Street, NBG, and Twomp Side rule the blocks from Truman Road to 29th Street, from Cleveland to Topping Avenues. Then you have the Trey Walls, Click Clack, and the 33rd Street Gangs, and they claim the areas from Troop to Cypress and from 30th to 43rd Streets. Now, they're going to say that members of the 5 Ace Deuce are scattered throughout the East Side. And it said that their allegiances change like the day. Now, Marcus Lee, who was a close associate of Shantae Henderson, who is in her own right infamous in Kansas City history because she was one of the only ladies placed on the FBI top 10 most wanted. She would go on to describe Marcus Lee as a millionaire and named him as somebody that would supply her from time to time. So in his own words, in an interview with Pitch KC, he would go on to say that he felt like he was a target and definitely felt like he was being watched. Now, by all accounts, he had a very, very rough life. It said that he left home when he was the age of 12. And by the time he was 16 years old, he had racked up a handful of juvenile charges, including a rape charge where jury had acquitted him. So from an early age, he seemed very savvy in a courtroom. Now, in the year of 2000, when he was 16 years old, he was charged with selling crack and Jackson County prosecutors certified him as an adult. He was convicted and he would end up being sentenced to probation for that. But his name wouldn't grow in infamy until Sunday, September 15th, 2002. That's going to be where a 19-year-old gentleman by the name of Teron Logan was shot to death at a block party on 25th and Norton. Now, Lee would be arrested later that same day and charged with second-degree murder. He would go on to post bond and he was released from the county jail shortly after that. Now, a couple weeks after that incident, a 20-year-old gentleman by the name of Lester Gunn was arrested for driving a stolen car. Now, as he was being interrogated by police, he would go on to say that he knew the identity of the shooter at the block party. Now, at trial, prosecutors would go on to state that Gunn had told police officers that a fight had broken out between some local kids and a guy who wasn't from the block. And that's where they're going to say that Marcus Lee had walked up with a gun proceed to shout to the crowd, watch out, let me show you how we do it, before shooting Logan in the head. Now, Lester Gunn would refuse to sign his statement at the end of the interview, and he would tell police that he did not want to be known as a rat. But sometimes it's too little too late, because the night before Marcus Lee's trial, Gunn was found shot to death as he sat in a car with his girlfriend. Now, that would seemingly tighten the noose on Marcus Lee because he would go from one murder charge to two and he would go on to spend the next two years of his life awaiting trial at a maximum security prison in Jefferson City. Now in that trial, prosecutors would go on to paint Marcus Lee as the leader of a hyper-violent neighborhood gang, but not to anybody's surprise. They couldn't find not one witness that was willing to take the stand to testify to say so. Lee would go on to be found not guilty on all counts in that case. We're going to fast forward five years later to March 5th, 2007. And that's going to be where prosecutors allege that Marcus Lee was a participant with a group of people seated in a parked car from which gunfire erupted across the street into a tire shop. Now, following the shooting, police officers would chase the vehicle from which the gunfire apparently came. Now, the occupants of the vehicle were being pursued. They fired at the police chasing the vehicle. Now, three men were apparently apprehended after the suspect's vehicle's crash. Now, during prosecution of that case, a detective by the name of Danny Phillips of the homicide unit would go on to take the stand. Now, Detective Phillips, who was not an active officer in the case, but he was involved in the collection of evidence on the scene. Now, he was asked if he had further involvement in the case, and he would go on to testify that he had contact with the suspects on March 28, 2007. The prosecutor would go on to inquire about the identity of the suspects, and Detective Phillips would say their names were Marcus Lee, who was sitting in the courtroom in all white, and mentioned a fellow by the name of Richard Cooper, as well as another gentleman by the name of Rayshon Taylor. He would go on to say that he collected all three men's DNA. Now, on cross-examination, 
Defense counsel asked Detective Phillips to clarify whether he took Marcus Lee's DNA sample some weeks after the incident. And Detective Phillips would answer right and then said, I knew him prior. Now, what happens next is very important because the defense attorney would go on to ask the detective, you were actually the first officer who referenced Marcus Lee at all. But I want to be clear, you were not involved in his arrest, correct? Detective Phillips would go on to answer no, which would lead the defense attorney to ask, this was collecting the DNA sample from several days after this incident. We're talking about a couple weeks, March 28th. Detective Phillips would answer, right, I knew him prior. Now, just that statement alone led Marcus Lee's attorney to immediately object to the statement concerning the officer's prior knowledge of Marcus Lee and move the court to declare a mistrial, which would lead to several weeks of back and forth, which would lead for a mistrial for Marcus Lee, making it his third in eight years, pretty much making him one of, if not the most infamous person walking the streets in Kansas City. But that would not last because he would eventually meet his demise on October 31st in 2011 at the age of 28. Now, they're going to say he was found shot to death on the 1000 block of Ann Avenue. Now, in an article about his passing, they were going to say that Lee is believed by authorities to have strong ties to East Side gangs and was best known for beating those three murder raps that we spoke about earlier. So in a city like Kansas City, you sometimes going to have to get your hands dirty and Marcus Lee apparently didn't have a problem with any of it. Now, if he was from or in Kansas City at this time, I definitely need you in the comment box. If you're in Kansas City right now, y'all tap in. Let everybody know how y'all rocking. And y'all know what it is with me. It's your boy Popalot, man. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all hit Clubhouse. Y'all search the mob room. We got all kind of conversations going on. We talking about the episodes. We bringing guests over there. So y'all definitely tap in. And y'all get at me however y'all see fit. Y'all hit the comment box below. Hit the subscribe right under this video. So y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. And let me know what stories we missed, what cities we haven't been to, what we got wrong, what gangsters we need to cover. And y'all know the rundown. Y'all tweet me, text me, call me, CC me, email me, mention me, tag me, stop me in the streets. However y'all want to handle this, your boy Pop-A-Lot. Mob, mob, mob.